I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. And as we leave the moon, we leave as we came, and God willing, as we shall return. Hi and welcome on the Hands On Time, my name is Mal and I'm doing watch reviews for you. So the topic of today is about um, a brand that I really wanted to, you know, to review for a long, long time, especially for uh, this baby that you see here. And the brand, this brand is Bulova. So uh, the Bulova brand was founded in 1875 by Joseph Bulova. He came from Czech Republic and opened his own jewelry in Maiden Lane Street in South Manhattan. He was such a good technical and artistic persona that uh, the people started no noticing him simply. In 1912, first factory in Vienna, Bienne, Switzerland was opened. Uh, they were uh, doing watch components uh, and in 1919 they did a large variety of wristwatches. Like Rolex, Bulova had uh, ambassadors and none other than Charles Lindbergh, Lindbergh sorry, after his famous Paris to New York flight won the Bulova watch prize. Uh, the brand created the Lone Eagle model after him, after Charles Lindbergh. In 1960, they created the famous Acatron, the first electric watch, and the same year Okay, a long, long story short because the story of Bulova is uh, absolutely fantastic and I'm not going to, you know, expand on it. But the same year, in 1960, uh, Bulova was the one that USA had chosen to go into space. So, what you have to understand is that it was an Omega, okay, that was chosen to go into space. It was Bulova. Bulova was the winner. But at the last minute, they preferred Omega over Bulova. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Maybe money, you know, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, at the last minute, they, they, they chose the Omega over Bulova. So again, um, a big a big jump into into history in nine, uh, 1971 uh, for the Apollo mission 15. Bulova asked uh, astronaut uh, David Scott to take a prototype with him as a backup watch, the Bulova Lunar Pilot. That watch, which is a reissue of um, the original one that had an automatic movement, and that one has a quartz, but it's an incredible quartz. We'll talk about uh, this uh, later. So. Uh, the legend says that, um, unfortunately, the crystal of the Speedmaster, or the Omega Speedmaster, uh, of uh, David Scott broke. Uh, so he took his Bulova prototype to replace it. And not only it survived the moon, but also the re-entry process with uh, flying colors. So David Scott kept uh, it away for 40 years. Okay, for 40 years he kept it, uh, I don't know, into a drawer. And then sold it at an auction for more than 1.6 million dollars guy okay and that was in 2015 so uh, of course Bulova did a reissue of that watch which is this one the Bulova Lunar Pilot the cost how much uh, did I pay for this watch well I paid 534 euros on Amazon but you can find this watch uh, in between 350 uh, to uh, yeah 500 Okay, so I'm thinking of a German shop, you know, creation watches. You can find this watch for way less money than um, I paid for it. The specs. What are the specs of, um, of this watch? You can find this watch uh, with different types of strap. Mine is uh, made out of stainless steel, but you also can have uh, it on a sort of a carbon leather, you know, style uh, type of strap. And the original, uh, you know, astronaut uh, strap, which is made out of uh, black nylon. The watch comes also with or without a date complication. As you can see, my copy has a date complication. Many people love the date complication, others don't. They think that um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's better without me. I prefer it with, even if I don't really like the position of the date, but I think it makes complete sense on this watch uh, because it creates that 3D, you know, uh, you know, it, it participates in that sort of 3D, you know, different layers component of the watch, and I, uh, I really like it. 
So the case is 45 millimeters. Everything is made out of stainless steel, 316L stainless steel. The thickness would be 13.5, okay, 13.5 millimeters of thickness. The lock to lock distance would be 52, an astounding 52 millimeters, it's big. Uh, the lug uh, width for the straps would be 20 millimeters, which is good because you can, you know, change. There's a, um, it's easy to change the strap on this watch. And the movement inside would be the Bulova proprietary 262 kilohertz caliber, high performance quartz 8136. Okay, so uh, an in-house uh, quartz movement from uh, Bulova, which is really special. The water resistance is uh, only 50 meters, but that's normal. Uh, you don't go and swim with this watch, it's a pilot watch. Uh, it's not made for it. The good and the bad, what's good, what's bad about this watch? Well, let's start by um, the good things for a change, okay? So, the good things about this watch, well, first the price. The price is crazy, less than 500 euros for a watch like this with that history, you know, that went um, uh, on the moon, uh, beautiful reissue, it's crazy, you know, it's just an anomaly, you know. Uh, so, okay, it was an automatic, you know, uh, movement before, they put inside uh, to replace this automatic, uh, you know, movement a quartz, but uh, that's another good thing, I think, because the quartz that is inside is just crazy, you know. The quartz that is, uh, that is inside this watch is losing only 10 seconds per year, guys. Okay, 10 seconds per year. A normal quartz would lose uh, something in between 10 to 15 seconds per year. Okay, that one is only 10 seconds per year. The only automatic watch that is, um, you know, able to do this would be a uh, high-end, high-end, you know, uh, automatic uh, movements like the spring drive, for example, from Grand Seiko, from this brand, Grand Seiko, okay? So, uh, incredible, incredible, incredible technology that is um, embarked uh, in this watch. 10 seconds per year. Uh, not a lot of watch can do that. And for the price that you pay, it's crazy. It looks really like the Omega Speedmaster as well. It's beautiful, okay? It's not a, um, an ugly watch, it's a beautiful watch. Really looks like the Omega Speedmaster, so you, you, you would be able to afford yourself uh, something that really looks like an Omega Speedmaster for uh, less than 500 euros. And uh, with this quartz that, um, you know, 260,000 times per second it beats, you know, it's eight, um, eight times more than your normal quartz. So the quartz that is inside, you know, for uh, the quartz uh, naysayers, you know, the one that are rent renting on quartz, well, <laughs> Take a look at this quartz, and uh, maybe you will uh, you will change your mind. So another thing that is really wonderful, again uh, because of these uh, you know um, 262 kilohertz quartz, is the way that watch operates. So the pushers are wonderful, as you can see they're really big, so you cannot miss them. They go well with the case. The conception of the of the watch uh, on its uh, on itself is beautiful, um, and Look at this. I start it. Look at that sweep. It really looks like an automatic watch. I know that the concentric, uh, you know, um, sorry, the wheel on the right will stop. I think it's uh, after a minute or 30, 30 seconds for, uh, you know, um, life um, for to save the battery. So don't be afraid if it stops, it's normal. And then you stop it with this pusher. You put, you push this pusher once and a second times to, a second time to, to replace it. You see that sweep? That sweep is wonderful. I love it. So let's start it again. Boom. You see that sweep? Wonderful. I haven't seen a lot of uh, of reviews with, you know, uh, where they let you know the sweep of the watch for a long time. So I'm letting you see it a little bit more let's pass the um, 30 seconds to see if it's uh, after 30 seconds that the, then the the right wheel stops yeah you see it stopped and that this is just to save the battery 
Okay, so don't be afraid, it's normal. So let's stop it. You see, Phew. the right wheel is um, taking its course back to where it was supposed to be. If you go more than a minute, it will, you know, turn uh, turn more, like more than more than a minute, and then once you push it once and twice and everything goes back to its place wonderful movement the 262 kilohertz movement from Bulova is wonderful by the way um, all the precisionist okay line of Bulova the precisionist line of Bulova is embarking the same technology so if if you don't like this watch but you only like the movement you go and watch the precisionist line of uh, Bulova and they all have the same movement okay so wonderful, wonderful uh, quartz inside. So uh, now what about the bad things? So many people are complaining about um, the fact that in its beautiful stainless steel bracelet version, like you can see, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, butterfly clasp version of the watch. There is too much contrast um, in between the case and uh, the brushed, uh, you know, stainless steel. Uh, strap that you can see bracelet that you can see here well it's true you know it's uh, it's true like here you have a really a uh, sort of a, a creamy color you know a silver creamy color of a of a case here and uh, a really silver shiny you know brushed bracelet but you have a link in between the pushers and the bracelet for its defense you know uh, so pff, me personally it doesn't bother me uh, that much but uh, I had to um, I had to tell you uh, what else is bad about this watch well the size clearly okay the size of the watch 52 millimeters uh, lug to lug distance is um, not small I have to say okay so my wrist is uh, 16.5 millimeters and I'm really curious to see how um, how I rock it and to see if it's possible for a 16.5 uh, millimeters wrist to wear this watch okay so these are these are the only things that really are uh, you know bothering me on this watch because uh, other than that I got this watch this watch is wonderful there's nothing else bad about this watch you know it's just yeah the size and maybe the fact that uh, you know you have a you have a, a, a difference in between the case and the, and the, the stainless steel bracelet so but other than that this watch this watch is really really beautiful and operates quite good as you can see okay so I forgot how to wear this watch well this watch is not a watch that you like the Omega Speedmaster that you would wear, you know, with a suit. It's uh, for me, it's um, it's too big, so I wouldn't wear this watch with a, with a suit. You know, this is a tool watch, uh, more of a tool watch, and this is a watch you will wear, you know, on the weekends um, with a um, you know a casual a casual out, uh, outfit. So uh, one of the most uh, one of the moment we I'm sure you are waiting for is the wrist shot. So let's try this watch and I'm gonna show you how it wears, okay? And there you go for the wrist shot, 16.5 millimeters, okay? And as you can see, it wears big guys, okay? So that's another thing uh, that I need to say, it wears really big, okay? So the thickness, as you can see, because of this uh, sapphire, you know, uh, crystal that protrudes a lot. Uh, well, it wears high, okay. And um, and the lock to lock distance, even if it's like at the limit, at the limit of my wrist, honestly, it wears big. As you can see, I'm trying to to put it on the sides, protrudes as well a little bit on the sides. It wears, it wears, uh, it wears really big. There's uh, there's nothing else to say. This watch, even if a lot of people are saying, you know, uh, that this watch wears like a 42, well, I kind of disagree, okay? It wears, it wears a little big. And that's why this watch is not sized and that you see that the, there are still, you know, uh, these things hanging. It's because I'm not sure I'm going to keep it. 
because it's way, it was too big. I think that if you want to rock this this watch, a minimum of uh, of 18, 18, or um, I don't know, 17.5, you know, uh, millimeter of a wrist would be uh, would be required. It's really a watch for for the big wrist. So I'm sorry, it's not true, you know. Uh, okay, it's not like shocking. Okay, I could I, I could rock this watch, but there's a problem here. Because, you know, I love to wear my watch a little loose. Go and watch my video on how uh, a watch should fit if you want to understand what I'm saying, you know. How a watch should fit. Go and, go and see. I, I, I love to let, you know, one finger, okay. One finger for the watch because your wrist is expanding the whole day long. So one finger just for it to, um, to, to, be, uh, to, to let my wrist expand uh, without, you know, having some crazy marks on my um, on my wrist so go and watch this video it's on my channel and with this watch it's, imp it's impossible because if you want to wear it with a 16.5 you need to to wear it really tight for it not to move because it, if, if it's mo if it's moving it's moving like this and look you will you will have a watch that that moves on the upper side or on the downside and it would look way too big look at that way too big way too big for that not possible you really need a watch that, that, that it's sized for your wrist for that, you know? So maybe you could rock it on a NATO strap, but the NATO strap will add a little bit of a layer under the watch, you know? Which is already really uh, standing high, as you can see. So for me, it's, it's really too big. I'm sorry to say, you know, I disagree with the people. For 16.5 millimeters, I saw many reviews on the internet, you know, they were saying, no, it's okay, etc. No, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not, it's, it's not okay, it's way too big. So, uh, yeah, a bigger wrist, yeah. You lucky bastards <laughs> out there with big wrists, yeah, buy this watch, you, you, you lucky guys, you know. This watch uh, will, will, is beautiful and will stand beautifully on, on, on your wrist. But for 16.5, it's, it's, um, it's not good, you know. 17, not good, 17.5, maybe. Maybe in between 17.5 and 18 would be a minimum. That's what I think. For it like uh, to stand normally on the wrist. And like I said, even if you put it on the NATO strap to wear it, you know, tighter for it not to move, you know, all the time, like, um, like this, you know, because if it's moved like, I mean, look how goofy this looks, you know, I, I cannot rock it. You know, even with that, it will, you know, like I said, add some sickness some 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 yeah some sickness to the watch and uh, and look like a, like a too big of a watch you know not a watch that would look good on your wrist honestly not refined at all so um, Bulova if you're watching this video why don't you uh, why don't you put out there you know the same watch but in 40 millimeters with not you know uh, less uh, luck to luck distance and a uh, thousand and thousand and millions of people will buy it you know but this 52 is, is way too much this is not a mainstream watch this is a watch that would go uh, you know on um, on big wrist or uh, on um, on a cost uh, an astronaut you know uh, outfit you know it would look good <laughs> because this is a a tool that was uh, actually made for that but not for not for a, a small wrist so i'm sorry but um, I'm not gonna keep this watch uh, for that, sadly. So let's take a moment, guys, uh, to, to see, uh, to witness the beauty of this watch. So as you can see, concentric, concentric circles here. I'm trying to zoom for you, 262 kilohertz. Here, reference, the tachymeter, the tachymeter bezel, which is also uh, you know in a in a different dimension as you can see on the what you call in English the rehot which is a, truly a French word uh, that you pronounce reo okay on the reo here the rehot around you can see it's really like three um, three three dimensional uh, a three dimensional dial there's a sort of a uh, you know on the circle around the rehot a sort of trenches and then you have the rest of the dial and then you have the, the, the different you know type of circles that are also you know uh, in a different dimension and then you have this beautiful you know uh, date complication it is also in a different dimension it is crazy it's really uh, 
sort of um, science fiction, you know, type of uh, type of watch, uh, and I kind of like it. Too bad it's too big. Really, too bad it's too big. I'm um, I'm sort of disgusted that uh, it doesn't doesn't fit my wrist, really. So let's see. Uh, let, let's have a, a quick look at the back. The, um, the stickers are still in there because uh, I'm not gonna keep it, so I'm not gonna take this sti the, those stickers out. Uh, Apollo 15, July 26, 1971. So that's um, that's the the time and place where uh, the mission actually, you know, took place. Yeah. So as you can see, Apollo 15, July 20, 26, 1971 to August 7. Uh, 1971 uh, and you have um, so it, it's the time and the place on the moon where uh, the mission actually uh, happened okay with the beautiful Bulova sign here sorry really hard for me to do it so that's the back beautiful back really nice with all you know sapphire crystal blah 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 all the the connotation of uh, of what um, this uh, this watch is actually made solid end links of course yeah beautiful beautiful but I'm disgusted because I'm not gonna keep this watch because it's too big so final thoughts well final thoughts are easy you you lucky big wrist guys this watch is made for you you know it's not made for us uh, with our uh, tiny chicken uh, wrists so yeah you lucky guys you you can buy this watch but uh, Unfortunately, this watch, uh, this watch will, won't stay in my collection and I have to return it because of that, you know. So beautiful, beautiful technology inside, uh, beautiful watch, the watch is beautiful. Uh, the, the movement is really, really, really nice to, you know, to, to, to operate. It's really satisfying, you know, but it's just not for me. And uh, am I sad? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm quite sad because uh, because I was really you know counting on this watch uh, to, uh, to 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 wear to to look good on my wrist. I saw many reviews; they were all you know even reviews uh, with wrists that looks that, that that had the same dimension as uh, as mine. And uh, and it's not true. This watch is way too big, you know. So no. Uh, 16.5, 17, even 17.5, no, you cannot rock this watch, this watch is way too big, it's, it looks goofy, honestly, way too big, way too big, even on a NATO strap, I don't think that that, that would do it, you know, but um, yeah, easy, easy final thoughts, you know, big wrist, buy it, uh, small wrist, don't buy it, and, and that's it. So guys, uh, there you go. Uh, if you like what you saw, well, subscribe. You know, like, comment. It really helps. Uh, you know, um, the the channel. And um, if you have a big wrist, well, you know what to do. If you have a small wrist, stay away from this watch because it's not made for you. I'm sorry to say. Have a nice day and uh, take care of yourself. Goodbye, guys.